Welcome to evening prayer. Thanks for joining me as we pray through the Psalms during this season of Lent. It's coming to a close now and these Psalms have been helping us to prepare for Resurrection Day, for everything that that means uh, in our lives. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 77 and you can grab your own Bible and open that up or you can follow the link in the text with this video and that'll take you to the uh, same version that I'm going to be reading so that we can pray it out loud together. Before we do that, we want to take a moment just to still ourselves. I don't know what sort of day you've had. Uh, I've had one of those days where there's lots of things coming in from, from different directions and uh, it can make you a little bit uh, distracted and unsettled. So I want to give this time deliberately uh, to focus on God's presence with us, to allow God to speak to us. If we've been given out and given out and given out all day, now is the time for us to, to change that posture uh, and to receive what God has for us from this word in scripture. So I'm going to light this candle as a visual reminder to ourselves that Jesus, the light of the world, is present with us, and then we'll be still. We light this candle as a reminder of the presence of Christ. Holy Spirit, as you moved over the waters of chaos in the beginning, when you come and move over the depths of our spirits, Jesus, you said, come on to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God, I ask for each of us taking part uh, in this simple act together tonight, that we will know this as a time of rest in your presence. as we receive from you through your word. Amen. When I read Psalm 77 in preparation for tonight, it reminded me of an experience I had when I was about 12. Um, whenever I first became a Christian, I felt amazingly close to God. Uh, I remember particular evenings when I would just go to my room and shut my door. Maybe I'd read my Bible or maybe just talk to God about my day. Um, and it is hard to put into words just how good that felt. It's hard to put into words what was going on inside me that made me feel this sense of closeness. It was like a physical warmth. It felt like it felt like um, being close to your mum. If that's if that's been a good experience for you in your life, um, that's what it felt like: an emotional security, an assurance of being loved. So that set aside time with God in the evenings. That was a, a sort of semi regular thing for me, and then. At one point, it stopped. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I remember uh, closing my bedroom door, ready to talk to God, and just not having that feeling. Um, and so I would try to, to replicate 
uh, whatever it was I'd done before, whatever my pattern had been before, I tried to get that exactly right in case something had changed um, to see if I could get that feeling back. But the feeling didn't come back. Night after night. And it felt like God who had loved me so much that I could feel it must have stopped. Now, even though in my head I knew that that wasn't right, that is what it felt like. And there were long nights wondering what had changed and missing that feeling of closeness. That's how the writer of this song, Psalm 77, feels. Um, Asaph is the writer's name and Asaph feels that God is absent. Asaph is distressed by this. And Asaph looks back with sadness on times when it felt like God was close by. The lyrics go, I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. That is so like my experience. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that when I was having that experience of uh, working through that feeling, not being there anymore, that I, that I came upon this psalm. Uh, and that's what triggered the connection for me tonight. But for me, I realised that that feeling of closeness had been a beautiful thing, but that that is not enough to sustain a relationship. And I learned that I can't base what God thinks about me on how I'm feeling from one moment to the next. Because those things change. But that feeling... Uh, of disconnection, of separation, that feeling that God is far off or that maybe God must not care, that is a common human experience. And that's why this is an important psalm. Around the halfway mark of Psalm 77, Asaph makes a choice. Asaph chooses to worship God. Asaph turns from uh, feelings of being forgotten by God to deliberately meditating on God's creation uh, and telling the story of God liberating people from captivity. And then that's where the psalm ends. So in response to the, the personal, subjective feelings of the psalmist, the lyrics lay out some objective facts about the character of God. It might not feel that God is good right now, but here's what we know about who God is. And then it feels as though Asaph ought to then go back and talk about how that changes those feelings. But that doesn't happen. The psalm just ends. It's almost like it invites us in to do that ourselves, to allow the objective facts about the goodness of God to shape how we feel about how good God is today. So let's pray this psalm. Let it give voice to the cries of your heart uh, anywhere you feel abandoned, anywhere you feel that God is absent, maybe that's for yourself, maybe for someone you know. Uh, we'll use this psalm and then we'll continue to pray for the world. Psalm 77, let's pray it together. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. 
I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favour again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. We just want to continue in prayer. So I encourage you, you can join in with what I'm praying, but also just pray what God has on your heart right now. Let's pray. And Lord, I'm uh, thinking of times in my life when it's felt like uh, you're distant or absent, where uh, the way I have experienced you before has changed uh, and I'm missing that. And I want to pray right now for anyone who's in that situation. I want to pray for anyone who has mistakenly thought that their relationship with you should be static and should be the same experience uh, when they're 12 as when they're 16 or 60. Um, God, our relationship with you is a real and living relationship and it moves and it changes and it develops. God, keep us seeking after you with all of our hearts. And Lord, I want to thank you that the um, Asaph wrote those words and realized that when you led the people uh, to freedom through the parted sea, it says your footprints were not seen. And that when you led your people like a flock, you did it by the hand of Moses and Aaron. God, sometimes it's only when we look back that we can see where you were present in our lives. Um, so Lord, I pray, yes, that you would give us eyes to see. Uh, where you're at work in our lives now, but also that we could look back and see where you have been at work. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that uh, does at times make your presence felt, uh, and that experience is very different from person to person. But Lord, I want to pray for any of my brothers and sisters taking part tonight who... Uh, who need a feeling of assurance, who need uh, an, an emotional experience of you, God. And I want to ask that they'll have that. I want to ask that they'll uh, feel your presence, that's, that, that, that you'll speak to them. Uh, maybe 
like you led the people through Moses and Aaron. Maybe you'll speak to them through other people. Maybe you'll speak to them through this tonight. God, that you will give them an assurance of your love for them, an assurance that uh, you're calling to them and have a, a plan and a purpose for them. God, we want to pray too for people who have never known your love. Uh, whether they have heard the stories about Jesus or whether that's just something totally missing from their lives. God, we we long for people to know you. We long for people to, to know the story of Jesus. We long for people to get caught up in uh, the the creation and redemption of the world that, that is going on all around us and that you call us to take part in. We long for people to get caught up in that to find their purpose in you. So, Lord, give us opportunities to speak to people that we know and love. Give us opportunities to show uh, what it is to follow Jesus. Lord, just as we're uh, beginning to move into a time of transition, uh, when... um, COVID regulations are changing. God, we want to pray uh, yet again for our government, for our leaders. We want to pray, Holy Spirit, that uh, you would not be absent from uh, the the places of power, uh, that you'd be present um, by your spirit and by the presence of your people, um, and that you would give supernatural wisdom and insight to our leaders uh, because they need it. They need it, Lord, as they make decisions that will affect um, generations and that are affecting us right now. And Holy Spirit, uh, oh, they, uh, whether we agree with them or not, I think we all realize they do a really tough job. They take a lot of uh, flack. Um, Lord, I want to pray for all our politicians and our civil servants. That when they go home at the end of the day, Lord, that they might have rest. That family, friends, community around them uh, would love them. And Lord, that they might have an experience of uh, of a higher power. The one that made them loves them too. Might they know that, Lord? Might they have a sense of that? Might they turn to you in their in their thoughts and in their hearts? And we're going to join together in praying for uh, our neighbours, our our town, our country, um, our world, uh, using the words of this prayer. Say it with me. O High King of Heaven. Have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me for evening prayer. Grace and peace be with you.